So, I'm just going to um, share a couple of things about baptism. Just, you may have questions um, about what type of baptism, why do we totally immerse people. Um, first of all, and I say this as, as a preacher, or somebody who loves the Word of God, there's nowhere in the Bible that it teaches infant baptism. Nowhere. Um, whenever I came to the Lord back 30 years ago, one of the first things I studied was baptism. I just got a Bible and a concordance and I started to study it. And I started to see the Bible says, believe and be baptized. And I quickly realized that an infant baby cannot believe. Okay? So I'll give you a scripture. Uh, first, or Colossians 2, 13 says, In baptism we are buried with him in baptism. We're also here risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who hath raised him from the dead. And you being dead in your sins... And the circumcision of your flesh hath quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. Okay, so in baptism, it is an outward sign of an inward profession. Where you personally, individually, make a decision that I belong to him, I'm a sinner, I need my sins forgiven. And in baptism, it is representative of death, burial, and resurrection. Um... So, at the age of 30, Jesus was baptized. Okay? So, you know, he could have been baptized as an infant, would you agree? But he was, he was uh, baptized at the age of 30. And he, he did that as an example to you and me. Interestingly, just the word baptism. The word baptism is from the Greek word baptizo. And the word baptizo means to plunge or immerse. Basically, to put under. So I'm just letting you know that it is a picture of death, burial, and resurrection. When somebody comes to Jesus Christ, they surrender their life. They basically die to their own opinions, to their own ways. What they're saying is, it's no longer me, it's him. My life is Jesus Christ from now on. So I'm just letting you know a little bit of background why we immerse people, why we put them under. It's because we believe the biblical pattern is literally... When you get to an age of understanding and you want to identify with Jesus Christ, that's why we do it. Um, at this time, I'm going to ask Destiny to come forward um, just to share um, a few thoughts from the Word of God. Let's welcome him. Amen. Amen. Sorry, seeing you barefoot kind of caught me off guard. <laughs> okay, so um, um, I just have a scripture text I'm going to read. Um, it's it's going to be very short. Um, but Matthew seven thirteen and 14, it says, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate... And broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Okay? So a couple weeks ago, maybe it was a couple months ago, um, I had the privilege of taking a couple of the, the younger boys out um, to go walking up by the Cotton Nature Center um, in North Sioux. And... Um, and we were walking along the trails, and, um, you know, they had the different types of trails out there. And um, maybe like an hour or something, hour and a half, two hours, whatever, we started running, running the trails. We were having a great time, right? And um, so we were nearing the end, and we were coming to the, the spot where there's like a, a park, whatever. And then there, there's benches that we were going to go and sit at and just talk for a little bit. So, you know, when, when you're in there, you know, depending on what trail you're at, um, you don't know where you're going to end up unless you've been there before, obviously, or if you have a map. And um, so we got done. We were sitting there, and I told, I told the kids. Um, so it was uh, Zachariah, it was Luke, and it was Riker. And I told them, okay, this is what we're going to do. Okay, I'm parked way down. I'm parked way down the street. Um, you know, maybe it's like 500, 600 meters, whatever. And we hopped on these trails. I, now I want you guys to do this. 
I want you guys to, each of you find a trail out there, hop on the trail, and I want you guys to walk that trail, run the trail, whatever. And whoever makes it back to my car by staying on that trail, you get to come home, you get to go back to where you came from, and the rest of you, you're stuck out there. <laughs> and at first they're like, okay, uh, not so sure about this. But then, um, then you know, surprising, surprisingly, they're like, yeah, let's do it, let's do it. I'm like, hold on, hold on. I'm, no, I'm just kidding right here. But let's talk about this, right? So um, I shared them this, this verse about the straight and wide gates and how God's way is such a narrow way. I mean, Pastor Paul talked about it earlier, about being the straight gate, about it being the tribulation gate, about it being uh, just trials and trials and different things that a man or woman and child will go through. And the wide gate is the easy gate. The wide gate is the one that many people go in and many people are trying to... Um, they just enter in and they, they, they think that they're going to end up back to the car. They think that they're going to end up back to the place where um, they're going to make it, right? So uh, Jesus is obviously, obviously referring to um, the narrow gate leading to heaven, leading to him, leading to life everlasting, and the white gate leading to hell, okay? Now, um, the reason I'm mentioning that is because... Um, the, the, the teenagers, the men, the women today, they're taking a stand, right? They made a proclamation. They, they, made, they um, gave their lives to the Lord. And they said, Lord, take away my sin. Take away, take, away, take away everything that I have. And Lord, give me this new life of you, right? And, um, and that's not the wide gate. That is the narrow gate. It says that many will, many will, um, it says, because the broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. These people are deciding, we're not going to go in this broad gate. We're actually going to take this narrow way, the way that God actually called us, and the, the way that God is actually going to provide for us, the way that God is going to be there for us, and these people are going in the broad gate, and, you know, it's It's destruction. They don't know which way their life is going to lead when they're going into the broad gate. But the narrow way is the tough way, and that's the way of Jesus. But that is the, that's the way that's barely, barely taken. It says, few there be that find it. Few there be that find Christ. Few there be that will find this life everlasting. But the people that are going to be baptized are publicly proclaiming, saying, hey, God has, God has rescued me. I am, I am publicly, going, publicly going to stand up here today publicly going to show my friends, show my family that I am going to going to um, show that I'm going to be uh, dead, um, resurrected, and have a new life, right? Just like what Pastor Paul talked about. They're going to die to self, be submerged, come and have this new life. And that new life has already been taking place. Um, but w- with, with the white gate, or with the narrow gate, Sorry, going back and forth with the gates. But um, I shared with the young men that day that, hey, when you go the narrow way, there's going to be people that will laugh at you. There's going to be people that will mock you. There's going to be people that hate you. There's going to be people that make fun of you. And, you know, there's people in history, many Christians that have been killed for going down the straight gate. For going down this narrow gate, people will just look at them and say, you know, you believe there's one God, there's many gods. But guess what? Christians stand up because they believe in their God and say, there is one God. There's not many gods. They might say, you know, uh, you only believe in one man and one woman for marriage. Yes, because that is what the Bible talks about. There's things that in the Bible that you can't fade away. You can't start making up new, new scriptures. You can't keep adding. You can't add on to the Word of God. You have to stick to the Word of God. And taking in their way is proclaiming and saying that I stand for Jesus Christ. Everything in the book is 100% real, and I believe it. Everything that these men, these women will um, today when they get baptized... They're saying, I believe in the word of God 100%. Doesn't matter what this world says. Doesn't matter what they do to me. I'm going to follow Christ. And today is that day where I'm going to show publicly that I'm being baptized 
and I'm following Jesus. So that's what I have for uh, this afternoon. So I'm going to pray. Lord, we just thank you for uh, this baptism, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that, um, Lord, you have provided a path. Lord, you have provided um, a way of escape. And, Lord, uh, we just thank you, Lord, that, um, Lord, you're there, Lord. You're there to rescue. Lord, you're there to call. Lord, the chosen. And, Lord, um, you're a faithful, faithful father, Lord. Lord, and um, none of these people here being baptized, Lord, would be here, Lord, without you. But, Lord, you are such a gracious, gracious God, Lord. Lord, you didn't want to um, just get rid of them. Lord, you didn't want to send them to hell. Lord, you didn't want to just uh, banish them, Lord, into destruction, Lord. But uh, you made a way of escape, Lord, and you have provided them the strength to go, Lord, uh, for them to go down the narrow way. And, Lord, we just thank you for that, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the day of celebration, Lord, for baptism. Lord, it's a great day, Lord. It's a, it's a celebration. And, and to have um, friends, family, um, everybody here, Lord, and just to see, Lord, their, this, their decision, Lord, publicly. Um, it's a big statement, Lord, just like uh, we heard, Lord, this is something that you want us to do. So, Lord, we thank you, Lord, and um, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 At this time, I'd like to ask the eight that are going through baptism just to come forward. So, I want to ask them to introduce themselves, their name. And then if they want to say anything further, uh, what the Lord means to them. Um, it can be as short as they want, but it can't be as long as they want, okay? <laughs> so we'll try and limit it a few minutes if they want to say something. So, um, so okay, you go first. Okay. Um, obviously, I'm the oldest in the group. Um, uh, I, I committed myself to the Lord a long time ago, but I never made the the public profession and, and got baptized. And, um, you know, I, through my relationship with the Lord, um, I've got through a lot of difficult times. We've all gone through hard times. And boy, if you don't have the Lord and the love and support of your family and your church family, um, that's a, that's a, that's a long road to hope. So I'm so thankful for that. Um, due to my circumstances, I was a spiritual leader in my home. And, um, that, that was hard. Um, but my goal was to raise my girls up to know the Lord. Because <laughs> I wanted them to have a home with him. And I that was going to be my responsibility. So, fast forward, I've got my, my girls raised, they're out of the home. Uh, they're on their own. I've got a grandbaby, new son-in-law, and I think probably what the Holy Spirit laid on me is, you know, yep, you, you raised them up. I've asked them to be obedient to the Lord. I've asked them to, you know, I want them to love the Lord. I want them to have a relationship. And obviously, I want them to have a home in heaven. But then I got thinking, probably just the Holy Spirit laying this on me, is that how can they, how can you ask them to be obedient to the Lord if you haven't? And this is my day of obedience to, to get baptized in the public profession because I want them to be obedient. Yes. And I want them to have a home in heaven. And um, I hope that they see this is my outward sign of obedience. And so when I'm asking them that I want them to be obedient to, that I have I have the, such example and the standard. So I'm, I'm thankful for today. Amen. Love it. <laughs> uh, hello, I, uh, I think most of you know me, but uh, my name is Miguel. Um, I don't have too much to say, but I um, just want to say, just uh, give praise to God, because I, um, I don't even know where I would be right now without him. It's just to even think, like, uh, it, it would be hell on earth. That's all I know. And, yeah, just give God praise for all the things. That he's got my family and myself through. So, thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Uh, um, my name is Tanner. Um, I don't have anything good. 
that he's he's someone that I have. He's always there. And he never leaves me. And yeah. I'll leave. Uh, my name is Chance. Um, most of you know me. Uh, I was not raised uh, in a Christian way. I want to be able to show my son uh, to turn from the worldly sins and to be able to, like like you say, be an example for the little ones and, and show them the, the right way, turn away from the worldly sins and, and put Jesus first. I'm kind of struggling right now, but that's the <laughs> that's the. The, the word of message I want to put. Absolutely. Amen. Amen. Um, my name is Easton, and uh, I guess I just had like a lot going on right now. I'm just thankful that uh, the Lord had helped me push through everything and just like save my family and help my family out. And I'm just thankful that um, you just pushed me through everything. My name is Vanessa. Oh, <laughs> um, yeah, it's been, I think, almost seven years since I've been in this church, I believe. And um, it's, I almost got baptized like two or three different times, and then I got rescheduled, and then it never happened, which, you know, is fine, but. After seven years, it's finally happening, and I'm thankful because I'm getting baptized with my little brother, so it's even more special, and just thank God that, um, yeah, he's been gracious and forgiving, and just has done a lot of good. Amen. I'm a cat, and I'm probably nervous me. But, um, yeah, so the question was, like, what is God mean to you? And he's my savior. And um, a word that was coming to mind, though, was confirmed this morning, was refuge. And that's what he is. He's my refuge and strength and ever present help in trouble and time of need. So, um, yeah, he's my redeemer. He's um, brought me here. Like, um, it's been talked about from death to life, church life, and I'm really thankful for that. But for a little bit of a testimony um, about, like, baptism, um, so I was actually baptized in 2016, and, um, yeah, I was, like, 11, I think, and the reason I did it um, was more of a, to, like, kind of check the box, like, I thought I was a Christian, and... Um, I went to church and everything, but it was in my head and on my heart. And um, the next year, in 2017, um, I gave up, or Christ came into my life and saved me because I couldn't have um, saved myself. I couldn't have done anything. Um, but yeah, so I actually got saved in Northern Ireland. And from that time, um, I actually felt conviction for the first time, like true conviction about um, being baptized. Actually, like in Northern Ireland, I um, I felt such a conviction to get baptized, but I felt shame and um, guilt because I had just been there year before. But um, yeah, so the reason I want to get baptized is I'm obedient. I've been disobedient multiple times that we I could have, and I was convicted, but um, yeah, and it didn't, so I like this shirt too because it's unashamed, and that's why I want to be unashamed in the gospel. Hi, my name is Ava Springer. Um, uh, okay, it's okay, I'm doing this. Um, so, uh, Jesus Christ is literally everything, um, I believe. I said I got saved during my pregnancy. Um, it was really hard and really tough. Um, but through it all, God was with a beautiful, healthy baby and, you know, just relying on Him. And it was so hard, especially alone, 
go around and just relying on him and everything. So I just thank God for that. Um, I just hope that um, my family can see God's love through me and I'm just thankful that they're here to experience this with us. So thank God for that. Amen. <laughs> At this time, we're going to do the baptism, so I'd ask Kyle to come up and um, see. Um, we're going to ask just... Oh, there you are. <laughs> um, so we're going to ask everyone who's been baptized just some simple questions. They've already seen the questions before. They're asked. They're very simple questions. <laughs> and um, then on the profession of their faith, we're going to publicly baptize them. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Now, it's six questions I'm going to ask you. Have you given your heart and life to Jesus Christ? Yes. Do you accept that in doing this, you must turn from your sins? Do you desire to identify with Jesus Christ in baptism, representing death and burial to self, and a resurrection unto Christ? Do you realize this means that your life is no longer what you want it to be, but what He wants? Do you covenant to live for Jesus the rest of your life? Janelle, on the profession of your faith, we baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. I get that five questions asked. Have you given your heart and your life Do you accept this that is doing this you must turn to your sins? Do you desire to identify with Jesus Christ in baptism, representing death and burial of himself, and the resurrection unto Christ? Do you realize this means that your life is no longer what you want it to be, but what he wants? Do you covenant to live for Jesus the rest of your life? Thank God. Eva, on the confession of your faith, we baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. Yeah, on the confession 
in our faith, we baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit.
you decided, guess what? He's worth following. We've heard the truth today. We've heard about the two paths. There is two paths. One's a broad road. And the Bible says there's many on it. But it says about God's road, it's a narrow path, but few there be that find it. And that, that has to be the most sober words in Scripture. Few there is on the road to heaven. Many there is on the road to hell. So I'm just saying that that's something that's a challenge for us as Christians. We have to let others know when we get the word out. Because we want our loved ones, we want our friends to make it. Amen. Let's just pray. Oh, Kyle, would you just submit our service to the Lord? Lord Jesus, we just thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness, Lord, and Lord, for you know, obedience and work within your children, Lord. And we just ask you to be with them, Lord, as they go out, Lord, in their daily lives, that they would just represent you, Lord, and that your face, your face would shine upon them, Lord, and they would show who you are in their lives. And we just thank you for it, Lord. Be with them, Lord. Give them strength and comfort, Lord. And we just remind them, Lord, that no man will pluck them out of your hand, Lord, because you're faithful and true. We just ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I'd like the congregation just to show their appreciation uh, for Cornerstone Church and for not just opening up the church, but for their hospitality, their love, and their, just their encouragement here. So could we just as a church just show our appreciation to them? Their family, and anytime any of you that know anyone who comes here knows their family, but also uh, I just love them to bits and I just feel at home here. So I want them to know that. Thank you, Greg. Thank you, Jeremy. Stay there.